Hello everyone and welcome to everyone's favorite tournament. It's the final game uh, of the PogChamps 3 Championship uh, and um, uh, this is the Blitz game. So the, uh, in the PogChamps usually they play uh, in rapid time format 10 minutes per player but as uh, the, the two rapid games ended in a draw, first was won by uh, Rain Wilson, second one by Sardosha, uh, this is now the, the tiebreaker. And this is a Blitz game, quite a short one and quite a deadly one. Uh, we didn't cover all that many games but I did say I will uh, show the, uh, the game from the finals so uh, without further ado let's check it out it's uh, uh, Rain Wilson uh, 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 producer uh, actor writer you've seen him in pretty much everything now also in the Pog Champs uh, facing a mid laner uh, for the French uh, League of Legends team I cannot pronounce that really but it's something like uh, Le Frede Purgatorie uh, I always butcher uh, French names uh, but yeah it's, it's quite a game uh, so so let's check it out uh, uh, Wilson with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have c5, sorry about that. Uh, the Sicilian defense is on the board. We have knight to f3 and e6 now. Uh, we have b3. And this is a very uh, tricky variation. It's uh, been played by Hickey Vesterin and a Finnish Grandmaster who often employed this and uh, uh, due to this it carries his name. Uh, but usually you'll see something like d4 here, maybe knight to c3. b3 is, uh, uh, well, very rare. Uh, but okay, uh, preparing to fianchetto the, the dark square bishop. And now here black might do the same. Black might play b6, bishop to b7. Uh, but here Sardosha goes knight to c6. He wants to strike in the center right away. We have bishop to b2 and now d5 striking in the center and this is all perfectly fine for both sides uh, We have uh, captures um uh, sorry, e captures on d5, e captures on d5 and now bishop to e2 You could go a bit uh, uh, deeper into the position bishop to b5 It's uh, kind of a general rule in chess to develop your pieces as deep into your opponent's position as possible But here it's... Um, uh, you you, you kind of have to ask yourself uh, what what if black plays a6? Uh, do I capture? Do I go back? Point is here, it's fine to capture here because after let's say captures, captures and castles, black still needs to develop uh, both bishop and the knight to be able to castle and white already is ready to go for some sort of an attack so maybe it would be uh, not, not so great for black to play a6. So bishop to b5 definitely possible, uh, rain, go, uh, rain goes for bishop to e2 instead. We have knight to f6 and now castles. Uh, we have bishop to e7, black is now also ready to castle, and now uh, you might um, uh, try a lot of things here, d4 is a known move here in this position, and in all of the games that actually reached this position so far, I think there were 4 or 5 of them uh, from uh, official tournaments, uh, in all of them d4 was played, but here uh, we have h3 by rain, and it is as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. So let's see what happens. Uh, we have castles by black and now bishop to b5. And here you see that the bishop never really had anything to do uh, on e2 because uh, you don't really need the both h3 move and bishop to e2 move. You don't really care about bishop g4 since your bishop is already on e2. So playing both bishop e2 and h3, uh, not, really, not really the... Well, there, there's no point in doing that. So here, bishop to b5, now getting the bishop to uh, where it should have been with bishop to d7 and rook to e1, getting the rook to the nice open e file. Rook to e8, black prepare, prepares to counter white's rook, and now knight to c3. So what do you play here? Here you might uh, you might go d4, and the position is basically screaming for d4, but here black first goes for a6, challenges white's light square bishop. We have bishop captures on c6, bishop captures on c6, and now uh, uh, rain goes for d4, saying that now uh, he, he will not allow black to push d4, and he is very, very happy with his position. But now black goes b5. Probably with the idea of dislodging this knight with b4, uh, but okay, uh, here you could go for captures and captures, and let's say you trade everything off, captures, captures on e8, uh, but still, uh, you're white and you don't really have anything to show for it. Black has a very, very strong bishop pair, he's gonna play the rook to c8 or d8, both are possible, you can either support this pawn, uh, or as you're controlling the c4 square, you can even play rook to c8, hone down on that c2 pawn, which is a backwards pawn, so a lot of, a lot of possible ideas here for uh, for, for black, so not really uh, interested in doing that. Uh, he instead goes um, 
uh, knight to e2. And now the knight can come to g3. From g3, the knight can come to f5. And he wants to shift uh, his attack over to the king side. Then the g7 pawn might become weak. Uh, the bishop will also help out. So that's kind of the plan. We have c4 now. c4 is one of those weird moves that um, are, are actually playable. Because you want to keep this uh, dark square bishop closed. You do not want to allow white to capture this and open up this diagonal. So c4 definitely makes sense here we have knight to f4 abandoning the plan of going knight to g3 and to f5 so knight to f4 instead uh, and now comes bishop to d6 putting pressure on the knight here so queen to d2 defending that knight on f4 also connecting rooks this is something you always want to do to finish development and black needs to do the same and black does it with tempo queen to c7 and now uh, the rooks are connected and the, the knight on f4 is under attack although here knight to e4 was all also incredibly strong it's a beautiful square for the knight attacks the queen on d2 so this was definitely the way to go but okay queen to c7 first putting pressure on the knight here and now knight to e5 and this is now a monster knight here nothing can dislodge it uh, it's uh, very well defended by the pawn by the rook by the bishop on b2 uh, but here black finds uh, a most uh, unpleasant move and that is knight to e4 now the queen is under attack and here you have a problem uh, because the knight moved uh, from f6 the e4 the f6 square has been vacated for the pawn and this is Ardoche's plan we have queen to e3 and now the absolute best move for black uh, is f6 and this is what is played f6 and now if you move the knight then of course the bishop uh, the uh, knight on f4 hangs so knight captures on c6 was played and here uh, black actually recaptured on c6 however bishop captures was the way to go it seems uh, like it's just the same because after let's say queen f3 uh, if you capture the knight then the bishop falls as well problem for white is that black has this bishop to d2 move attack in the rook and now you have to decide you're either, either going to try and save the rook with something like rook e2 then black wins the knight on c6 then black is up a piece and black is completely winning so instead of going for this we have queen captures on c6 and now uh, white is still uh, white is still able to keep on fighting white plays queen to f3 now uh, probably with ideas of uh, just getting the queen uh, out of the e-file from the rook and maybe also shifting the queen to the attack. Uh, but here again, you can play c3, you can close off this uh, uh, light uh, dark square bishop completely, uh, or you can go queen to c7 is what um, uh, Sardosha played. Uh, he goes after this uh, knight on f4, so the knight is under attack twice. And here uh, we have a really, really awesome move by white, and that is knight captures on d5. It's a very strong move. It attacks the queen here, also removes the defender of the knight, so the knight can now be captured. But here is uh, where things start to go wrong. Here white uh, has some minute, one minute on the clock, whereas black has three minutes on the clock. And here we reach the position from the thumbnail. Bishop to h2 check was played. Now one move uh, wins the game for white, one move loses the game for white. So feel free to pause the video. What would you play here while I give you a couple of seconds? So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not playing king to f1. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, yes, king to h1 is the way to go. However, in the game, uh, king to f1 was played. And here, uh, Sardosha just played uh, knight to d2. And this is not only a royal fork as it uh, now checks the king and grabs the queen, but also it is checkmate because the bishop covers the g1 squared. The rook cuts off the king's... Uh, uh, path to the e2 square so you don't have any moves all of the squares are blocked and your king is in check this is this is checkmate uh, uh if if uh, uh, if if rain wilson played something other than king to f1 which is the only other legal move and that is king to h1 here black uh, really has no moves and he had uh, one more minute on the clock i think this was just uh i, I think he knew that he was kind of winning here and uh, he thought it was all the same i guess he missed knight to d2 check uh, and he thought, okay, wherever I go, it's just a completely winning game. But here, uh, after King to H1, it would uh, indeed be winning because this is now attacked twice. Uh, the queen is under attack. If the queen moves from this diagonal, also the bishop can be captured. And there just isn't a good move here. Once you move the queen, let's say queen to F7. Now you, you just start gobbling up material. Rook captures here. Now the bishop is being threatened. The knight, of course, cannot be captured. If you capture the knight, then this just comes with check. So after you capture, the defender of the queen has been removed. Uh, just queen captures on, on d5 with check. And this is now completely winning for white. 
Uh, so yeah, after this uh, knight to d2 checkmate, the game was over and the entire tournament goes to Andreas Honet, uh, also known as Sardoshe, uh, and he is the winner of the Pog Champs 3 tournament. So really, really crazy game, uh, and uh, it's very interesting. I've seen some games uh, from Pog Champs 1, also Pog Champs 2, and now uh, in the finals of Pog Champs 3, the, the games are of uh, much, much um, of a much higher quality. So we'll see when it comes to Pog Champs 10, Pog Champs 20, Pog Champs 30. Uh, we will probably have some 23, 24, maybe even 2,500 players who are who are not even chess players, but uh, you know, chess will be so uh, into everyone's uh, lives that uh, you know whatever you'll be doing whether you're a lumberjack or maybe you know you will, you, you tend the bar you will also be a 2500 player i mean why not uh, so yeah, and once again, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, nice game by both of them. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Lapo and Paul, Levan Daniela, uh, Taylor Alexander, John Austin, and Eric Berman for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.